Play on your card. Hey, Danny, how you doing? Never felt better, never had more. I have a uh, generic been... question for you. So here we are in this process. You've seen my course. We made us a, a call, a cold call to a landlord who says, you know, I'm not in this business. I'm in the real estate business. I'd love to give you this yep. business that's fully functioning and collect a check. Oh, there's cars going by. Every time I think there's going to be a good video, there's cars going by. So how much do you think that a, that a decent 2,500 square foot successful laundromat earns? Per month, I would say if it's successful, like 10K a month. I couldn't even hear you. Like ten thousand dollars a month. You talking about gross or net? Net. You would be taking home ten thousand dollars a month in the store. Two thousand three hundred. That's a guess. That'll be my guess. Why are you doing this if you don't even know what the place is going to earn? I'm doing it for because I'm tired of having my time, selling my time for income, and I'm seeing there's this business as a way. Okay, remind me, what do, to, what do you do for a living? I quit my job, but I used to be a technology risk consultant. Well, you should get a job. <laughs> that is no need. I live with my parents. I'm 23. I'm young. Okay, you need to have a job. Let's be realistic. I've put dozens and dozens and dozens of people in laundromats in the last almost 20 years. And the ones that had horrible jobs that they couldn't stand, they would tell me, I can't wait to leave here. I can't wait to quit. Then they end up owning two and three laundromats and the income is phenomenal. They're making tons of cash and they say, you know what? I'm staying at the job. You ever see the movie Office Space? No, I've never seen it. You should. I don't want to ruin it, no spoiler alert, but the guy gets hypnotized. That's only the beginning. He goes into work and he doesn't really care about anything. That's how you feel when you're earning hundreds of thousands a year in cash. I had a couple that consulted with me the other day and I asked them the same question. What do you think a decent 2,500 square foot laundromat earns. They had no idea. There's been these YouTube channels who are skirting this issue on one side of this and ha have coin collection videos. You know the people I'm talking about. And they're collecting coin yeah. in, a, in a very small laundromat in very rural neighborhoods. Income is income. Profit is profit. And you will profit. On the other side of the spectrum, there's the distributors that tell you, oh, five turns per day and 300 pounds of drop-off laundry and you'll be earning X. Somewhere in the middle is the reality. I, I have a friend. Do you know who Joe Dan Reed is? Joe Dan Reed, no. You should. He's going to be with us in Vegas. <laughs> Did you know I'm having a conference in Vegas in January? Yeah, I know the date, but I've seen... That's one out of three things that you know. Let's call Joe Dan right now. This guy owns 11 laundromats the last time I checked. Hello? Joe Dan. Danny D'Angelo, how are you, <laughs> my friend? I love you, dude. All right. I am I am absolutely sick and tired of dealing with this question. What does okay. a laundromat earn? Joe Dan, we have my friend Juan on the phone and he has seen his way clear to hire the old man in the sea here to beat down on landlords and we got a place in New Jersey that is going to fall into his lap here pretty quick and I just wanted to ask him, do you even know what you're going to be earning? So for the Juan doesn't know who you are. Say hi to Joe Dan. Joe Dan's in Kentucky. Hey, Joe Dan. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you, Juan? Doing well, doing well. 
How many stores what, you have what, now, what's, Joe Dan? What's 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 the elevator um, conversation? I'm getting number my number nine. I'm signing a lease tomorrow, and it will be free, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Well, why would you pay for a laundry? All right, we we everybody understands yes. that. All right, we don't need to go into that. I I, I love I love no. how you're always towing the company line and all that. But you so <laughs> here, here's a question. I I, ha, I had I, I consulted with this couple the other day and and they didn't really. I mean, they they got it. They understood everything. They they've seen my course and full steam ahead. But then they said, "Well, we want to know what we're going to be earning." And it's that question. The distributors on one side of this will tell you, well, five turns per day and X number of machines and there's a formula. But that formula is all to total bullshit. Yes, you know it that. is. On the flip side, yes. there's, these, there's these TikTokers who are collecting coin and doing ASMR <laughs> videos and saying that a laundromat earns X. So I just want to say to you, how, how much does your, good, your best store... How much does it gross a month? Uh, 15 grand. Okay. And you have nine stores. Yes. I, I said, it might be a little bit more than that, Danny, but you see, here's, here's the thing where it, it depends on where comp, like say, for example, that's, that's, that store is in a very high traffic volume area. So then I have another store and I'm like, gosh, why can't that store bring in more than 6,000? You know what I mean? Um, but once you get the equipment paid for, um, sky's the limit. As long as you have good running equipment, you're you're golden, in right. my opinion. Now you're not, you're not gonna be a millionaire off your first laundromat. I'm gonna tell course. you that right now. Of course. I want the real figures out there. Now fifteen thousand gross. Yes. Gross. How big is that store? That's four. Uh that's uh, thirty two hundred square feet. 3,200 square feet, and how much and is I'm your... I'm still... Go ahead. So, well, you said that's your best store, so that's your biggest earner. Uh, yes, because, it, gosh, I, it's the only game in town. Yeah, um, you, know, you know, my, my latest store is catching up to it. It's, it's, it's already at about 13 and, and some change. Rented space with an equipment note. And this is what people really want to know. So what are you netting? How much are you taking home in that store? In that store, about seven. Seven thousand dollars a month cash money. That's that's it. Yes. Not, that's not and bad. No, no, not at all. <laughs> and, and and I'm gonna say, I'm not telling you uh the other things that uh, I do within that store to make more money. I have a Quarter pusher in there. I have two of them in there. That's uh, not including any ancillary no. stuff. No, no, that's not including anything like that. So um, I, I make fifteen hundred dollars a week off those things. Easy, okay. easy. You know, you put one of those machines in there. It's oh fifteen. God. Jesus, fifteen hundred a week. Yeah. So that's that's thirty thousand more dollars a month. That's right. That's right. Now, no. like you and your video, now, like you and your that's video another, that you Hold said, on, seven. That's, so now we're up to $10,000 a month. I'm not, I, I, I want to include everything. And that's why this is okay. a good conversation, because you have no idea I'm calling you. You have no idea we're going to go through this. Okay, so $10,000 a month. And you're not talking about lottery tickets or bullshit. These are machines no, that run themselves. No, nothing like that. Those machines run themselves. And then, and then on top of that, I don't fool with, um, like you said, I, that's one thing I learned in your video. The first thing I did was close down all the uh, pop machines I had. And then a guy came in and, he's, and he gives me 20%. Yeah. So that's an extra $400 a month. So, but okay. I'm not filling the machines. I'm not doing anything. I don't care. And for those uh, that don't know, 10,400. Now, I, I love you, dude, because now we're figuring this out together. 10,400. And the thing is, a lot of people want to go out and, and, and they want to own a soda and snack machine. And my, my thing is, don't no. do it. It's just a wreck. 
And you did it for Run a while. Because you're going to be, you're going to be, uh, you're going to have stale chips. You, somebody's going to break the machine. Let let a company take care of that. You know, Pepsi will give you twenty percent, or you can find a local guy and negotiate with him. He'll give you thirty yeah. percent of uh, of the revenue. So, so they're basically renting your space in there for thirty percent of the revenue that they bring in, and and then you don't have to be responsible for it. So, if they bust the glass in there, they steal a pop. Who cares? Exactly. Um, they'll they'll figure it. Out. Same with those game machines. I I uh, I was I, Danny. I was by my own quarter pushers. Now I have a guy who gives me fifty percent, and now if if they tear the things up, I don't care. I have yeah. four of them in there, and uh, and people line up playing them. Anything that costs you time, get the hell out of it, and that's always run, my chalkboard. Yeah, it, it, if it takes time. If there's anything I learned from your video, that's what I've learned. You you need to know how to fix simple water valves, uh, drain valves, just simple stuff like simple maintenance like that. And then you need to keep the place clean, um, and and uh, it just it runs itself. Um, you know, it, it really does. Have good light. Walls painted. I know. The I know you're. There. I know you're talking to Juan, but you're also talking to the universe who gives a shit. Here, here's here's yeah, the thing. True. The reality is, one store is a hobby. And when you're like Correct. you and you're getting into double digits of laundromats, I mean, that's some serious dough, dude. That's a couple Harleys in the garage. That's uh, bills paid. Three Harleys. three Harleys and a Rolex. I love you. No, no, more than one Rolex. Come on, Danny. <laughs> we, but it's not. I'm trying to catch up. I'm not there, but I'm trying to catch up. It's not about the money. It's about the shit you not can buy with it. Exactly. It's, it's fun. You, you know, your lifestyle changes, you know, one laundromat, you know, I was doing okay. You see, here's, here's the funny thing. One laundromat I was doing okay. Um, and it was a good, what do they say? Passive income that they say all the time, you know, you hear passive income, but now I have nine laundromats and, and I, I'm telling you when I, when I give you these numbers, that's, that's on, I'm giving you the slowest month ever. And I'm, I'm talking about summer where people are wearing shorts and tank tops, okay? Right. And when the winter hits, your numbers go up. People don't realize when, that it's a cyclical heavy. business, especially where it does get hot. And it's also a bigger issue. Correct. The the you know the lower income folks that don't have a washer dryer, their kids, they're the ones who need fresh clothes every day. If they don't go to a pri- if they don't go to a private school or they don't have a uniform, they need fresh clothes every day during the school months. When the summer comes, you know those kids are playing in the yeah. hose all summer, and they have their bathing suit, like you said. That's right. And, and guess what else happens? Um, if you are, well, I, I don't know. It just, it's, it's a uh, recession-proof business, number one. It's yeah. an essential business, number two. So you'll never shut down. Um, we saw because that. Because people have to have clean clothes. People have to have clean clothes. Well, I know that Juan is just sitting here listening to the two of us jabber on, and I also quizzed him as far as he knew what was going on in uh, January here in Vegas. So some details are going to start coming out about Vegas here pretty quick. And man, I'll be there, Juan. I'll be there. To to, I'm going to force I'm going to force guys like Joe Dan to stand up and talk for an hour. Uh, your tuition basically pays the bar tab. Let's put it that way, because open bar on the <laughs> rooftop, downtown Vegas, two day event. You're going to hang out with me, Joe Dan Reed, Luke and Lee Williford, Investment Joy, Brandon Schlichter. Who knows who that guy is, right? We're going after all the people that are, I hate to use the term, YouTubers, hot dogging with Dan. I always forget somebody uh, following Keenan. You know, yeah. The real. Oh, oh, I know you're afraid. Chock full of quarters will be chock there. full of quarters. The real people, and it's not because these people are Instagrammers or YouTubers or influencers. It's because these are real operators who know the real shizzy about these stores. The type of people that you're clamoring to get a hold of and just bend their ear for a minute. That's what it's going to be all about. But anyway, I digress. Juan and I made a cold call to a store that he scouted in New Jersey, and it's got a great footprint. 
were about to dial the landlord when we oh, had wow. that cold call. I don't record every call that I, I have, and I don't record every day when I'm in the office. But at the end of the day, I also don't put out a lot of the wins, especially in my short videos, because they'll run flat. Nobody cares. Nobody wants to see me call somebody and they say, yeah, we're absolutely, I'm not in the laundry business. That's, that doesn't get the clicks. And I'm not here for clickbait, but you know, the more people I can bring on board, the more people I can save from buying a laundromat or building a laundromat, which is not the, the laundromat. Way to... hey, I can show you how to build a laundromat, but that nobody will do it. I <laughs> think you'll you'll go broke quick. <laughs> right. So I, I have a and and you're look you're in rural Kentucky, and I appreciate your reality. So I had a client two years ago in Connecticut, and his family has three stores. They have five now, and those three stores. He was really pissed because they were grossing 30000 a month. And I cracked the whip. We talked about everything. And I said, bro, you have to implement X, Y, and Z. You have to get rid of your paid employees. You have to stop trying to make money in wash, dry, fold. And I know that's a whole other thing. Now he's doing 55000 a store. Oh, but that's the, great. Good for him. The goal is profit. Profit. And people ask me, what do it these is. places really make? If you listen to the distributors... They're going to tell you, well, five turns per day. I love you, Joe Dan, because I can call him and he doesn't have a, a traditional job where he's sitting in a cubicle filling out TPS reports. He can pick up the phone and sort of talk to a guy like you, Juan, and say, this is the reality. And you're all you're seeing, and I know this, you're seeing that money. You're thinking $7,000, well, $10,000 a month net per store. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I, I haven't even looked at the numbers. I'm just guessing because I bet there are a lot more than that because my lifestyle sure does reflect it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny how you look at this thing. Quarters, it, it's, it's a cash business, and no one sells a successful cash business like Danny's always said, and, and I, I agree. But with this business, we'll allow you to have freedom. And that's the thing that I've noticed more than anything. I've never had so much freedom. And if you operate it the right way, you will have freedom. And freedom costs a lot of money. Well said. Very well said. I, 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 mean, you know, I mean, you can't buy freedom. I mean, what's it worth? What's it worth to just not have to go home? Yeah, look, I can go home to my kids at, at 2 in the afternoon or 10 in the morning. I can go work out. I can go. I can go to the gym at nine a.m. or or five p.m. Or not it doesn't at all. Matter. I also or not at all. <laughs> exactly or not at all lately. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I, it just depends on what your goal is. And and I and I, I'm a true believer in in, in grabbing a water matter. Dude, if, most if I, the if the, I, the, if I, the difference is Joe Dan. Most people are scared to death to take the leap to own a small business. They're scared. Uh, to death. I feel the emails all day, every day. No one well, has, no I, one has. And, and another thing, you know, what scares me? And I know you're the same ilk. Imagine having a job tomorrow. Imagine everything comes crashing down for whatever reason, Joe Dan, and you and I have built these businesses, the real estate, your cabins in the Hills, all the things that you do, you have to diversify. The laundromat gives you the money to do that, and now you're sitting pretty. But just imagine for a minute, really, if everything somehow went away and you had to go work at a job. Oh, God, how depressed would I be? Oh, that would be depressing. Being told what to do by people? No. I'm not trying to put down no. people that work hard and they're the salt of the earth and all that. The world needs ditch diggers, too. What I'm talking about That's is folks like us that understand when a decision needs to be made, you make it. And it might be wrong. Well, there's thinkers and doers, Danny. There's thinkers and doers. I'm a doer, and then I'll think about it. <laughs> I love that. I love it's that. It's true. It's true. I mean, and you're you're a doer. I mean, we just either you think or you do. I'm a re I react to everything that I see. I'll take the risk because the risk is worth it. And and I'll tell you what, if you take this risk and and it, and you figure out it's not for you, it's easy to get rid of. Without hurting your bank account. It really is. That's was, another thing people don't understand. Right. I was fired from every you job can't. I ever had. I would work to get booted <laughs> out. Terrible. The only job I didn't get fired from was the Navy, and I tried. 
And, oh, uh, you know, and, and talk about taking orders. Those are real orders. That's something that you have to listen to. And it was the same, as, you know, and I had a lot of careers, man, like you, working at a bank, being a merchant teller, throwing bags for an airline, being a corner office <laughs> general uh, manager at a private investigation firm, right? That these people were 20 years my senior and they were going to be there forever. And they were jealous that I was given the top spot in that job. But I couldn't wait to get out of there. Couldn't wait to do my own thing. <laughs> Exactly. Well, you're doing very well, my friend. You are doing well. We're going to see you in Vegas. Correct. Juan, any questions in the known universe as they relate to Rolex watches, Harley Davidsons, or the lifestyle of Joe Dan Reed? And why the hell? Dude, you know what? 10 grand a month in Kentucky. Jesus, you could be the mayor. Well, let me tell you this. Uh, Lexington is very rich. I'm in yeah. bluegrass country, man. We have horse racing. We are, we, Breeders Club just left our town. And that's another thing. When, you, we, when these big venues come in town, you're the top spot they come to. Yeah. They have to wash their clothes. Of course. So Juan, there you anything? Go. Uh, anything? My biggest, my biggest question is because I noted that you said that you take fifty percent of the coin pushers, and so how do you verify that what you're getting is actually fifty percent? I trust that the guy's not going to rip me off because if he finds out that he is, if I find out that he is, I ruin his reputation. He won't be in another laundromat any, anywhere. So uh, you just got to kind of trust it. You could be there if you're that guy that has to be there and watch him count it. So be it. He'll weigh the coin and say, here's your 50%. And I can answer that as it relates to me when I had those relationships as well in two ways. Number one, it's funny that you asked that, Juan, because you're getting a check for free money. That's right. Now, I'm not saying that no matter what, even if he is ripping you off, it doesn't matter. No, like Joe Dan said, you have to be the hammer and the sickle. You have to be the guy that's like, listen, you know goddamn well if you steal from me, you're done. It's over. And you portray that in your relationships with people. They get it. That's all I'm you not have saying for them? Somebody... Yeah. You're going to ask me about a quarter pusher? <laughs> also, are, you, are all your laundries coin? They are uh, all coin. And, and I, I've got a philosophy that I'm changing some of them to card because my wrist is killing me to turn them boxes twice a week. <laughs> and, and I'm not lying to you. So, uh, you know, my, my smallest store has 27 washers and that's 27, you know, turns plus, plus the stack dryers. I mean, it, it's worrisome. So if you're doing your first store, do coin. Yeah. I'm all about, I'm, I, I agree with Danny 100% on that because it's going to be cheaper and it's scale proof. Once you um, scale, car, once you scale yes. right in the middle somewhere, you're going to want to do a hybrid store with both. And then eventually, I'm, I'm adamantly against ever getting rid of coin. Joe, Dan, we have yeah, some, I know you. we're on YouTube live and we have some people asking questions. Uh, okay. Roe Jangles, which I don't think is his real name. I'm out scouting right now, Danny. I called the landlord and badmouth the laundromat. Then I found out he was the operator too. Let's just say I'm still looking. Well, let's break that down. Uh, you don't need to still look because Joe Dan can jump in on this just because he's the operator and the landlord. That doesn't change the way we do this. You need to understand that people will ask me and, and even when they're in my corner and I, they've hired me to negotiate like Juan, they'll say, oh, well, I found a store that's that's for sale. Should we walk away? No, it's a laundromat and it's nasty. Or I found a store where the landlord's also the operator. So what? It, it's a store and it's nasty, period, end of story. What if Juan hadn't put the store that we're going to call this landlord shortly in front of me where the landlord happens to be the operator? That doesn't matter. And if Rojangles, if I'm calling this guy Rojangles, if I'm hearing you right, you're, you're, you did it wrong because you badmouthed the laundromat and the conversation was over. First of all, and you know what I did? My ninth laundromat, Danny, right here. I'm signing it tomorrow. Well, not my ninth. It's probably my 15th in the 20 years I've been doing this. But here's yeah. my number nine that I will have in my possession tomorrow that I'm signing the lease. 
owner, landlord. And you know what? He he, he was like, well, why would you want to? What I did, I went in there, I complimented his laundry. I said, you're doing a great job. Your machines are old. You have all top loaders in here. And and he goes, well, what would you do? I said, well, I, I would just go ahead and retool this whole store. I said, he said, oh, gosh, I'm just tired of doing this. That's what you talk him into being tired. I mean, do you want to be a landlord or do you want to be a, a laundromat operator? He said, well, I'd rather be a landlord. And I said, what are you bringing in every month here? He said, 2500 I said, I'll give you $2,500 rent per month. Perfect. Put in a lease. Get $2,500. There's the tipping point. For 10 years. He's pushing a broom around the place. He's doing everything, not just when you see him in the store, or he's paying people under the table. He's got all the headaches and twenty five hundred, and you're giving him a buck a square foot and letting him leave. You've alleviated. And guess what else I'm doing? He said he wants to get rid of the property in five years. He put within the lease. I'm the first right to refusal on that Love property. It. Brilliant. That'll be another property, not a feather in your cap, but a jewel in the crown. Now, we, we have some more questions uh, for Joe. When you first started this journey, Tim Vang wants to know, what was your biggest hurdle when you signed the lease? I assume he means the first lease. What was the first thing you did as a new operator? Well, that's a question in three parts over here. Look at this guy. He's like a journalist. Yes, yeah, so, well, the, the big hurdle was to let them know uh, that it, I was never in the business, um, but what I'm going to do is redo this entire store, make it look brand new. So a lot of times these landlords, they look at it or it's in a shopping center and a big a conglomerate conglomerate is in charge of this place, you know, and they don't want uh, a laundromat a lot of the times because they look dumb. It, it, this place was a dump. They're like, yeah. well, we want to turn this into a doctor's office or whatever. And, and so then, you know, I come in there and, and I and I give them my plans. I show them exactly what I'm going to do, and they get a little excited. And uh, there's like in that, and then when I offer them a 10 year lease with two five year options or a 15 year lease with one five year option, they 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 like that. That's that's I think the biggest hurdle was the unknown. They don't know you. You know what you want to do, but they don't know. If that and makes you're sense. you're able to show them the real figures. You can point out to them, hey. This, this is what you learn, and we do this trick too if they're on the fence where you say a dollar a square foot, 3,000 square feet, that's X number a month, X a year, and then you hit them with the whole figure. You say, look, I'm giving you $380,000 in the next 15 years, and when they fall asleep that night, that figure is <laughs> going to be rolling around in their head. Yes. I, I consulted with a guy yesterday who's a New York City SWAT cop and a negotiator. And I mean the guy that negotiates people f from jumping off of buildings, talking them out of it, negotiating with terrorists, and he's hell-bent on hiring me. He's, I mean, what a compliment that is. He's like, Danny, you, you, it's, it's different. Sure, it's negotiating, but he says, I, I talk nice to people. Y you talked down to people most of the time, if that's the right phrase. And I said, well, it's not that. It's the fact that most small business owners treat the landlord like that, like they are the Lord of the land and it crushes them. And these guys, trust me, they appreciate when you push back and you say, no, we're not going to let you walk all over us. Absolutely not. And I believe you educate the landlord. I think they're alerting as you're speaking to them and then they break and they're like, huh, this guy isn't a joke. You know, he, he knows what he's talking about. And, and yes, I'd like to let you come in here and retool this place and make my place look nice and, 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 and operate. You know, the other hurdle is is getting the right distributor. You're, you, good luck. You know, that's that's the other hurdle. The the bad part about this industry, no one puts a dollar. Uh, you can't go and shop it like cars and and pit them against each other unless you have them all show up at once like Danny does. But it's it's difficult. You know. Well, that's a whole other story for another day. As far as distributors. That's true what they did to you, how you were their golden boy. Um, I know you're champing at the bit to get that information out there. But again, a, another story for another day. It, it just, none of it makes any sense, dude. There's no prices. I, I consult with a thousand people a year, whether it's a live seminar or a telephone consult, and no one ever knows what the equipment is worth, what it costs, or what they should be paying. They just don't know. And that's purposeful. It's... And, 
Are they listening? Are the distributors going to change that? Are they going to put their pricing out? No. That's the only way they can rob people of double the price. That's the only way. And I'm, I'm not against these, these folks feeding their family, but it doesn't have to be steak. It doesn't have to be every Friday on you for the next year. That's what they do. Yeah, exactly. Another generic question. Do your clients get their LLC before they send a letter of intent? Uh, no, Gus, not necessarily. Everybody's scared okay. of a friggin' LLC. I have 38... What is that? You just go to the Secretary of State and fill yeah. out your paperwork and see. I have 38 three. LLCs. The house that I'm yeah. sitting in, I do not own. It's owned by the Danny D'Angelo Trust because I'm not an <laughs> idiot. Because if, if I get a letter from the association, yes, I live in an associate. They're pissed off because I'm shooting fireworks or I've set a trash can on fire, which does happen. I look at it and laugh because it's not written to me. There's, don't be afraid of, that's a fearful question. You should have an LLC right now, Gus. If you buy my stupid course, write it off on your taxes because you already have an LLC. Stop worrying about it. I know billionaires with a B and they've got 110 LLCs today and tomorrow it'll be 111. Just do it. It's not hard. My accountant does them for $20. If you want to use LegalZoom, it's $99. Just don't click the thing that says you want more crap. You don't need the crap. You don't need the insurance. You don't need an LLC until three days after you sign the lease because you're going to pick the LLC. Let's say that the laundromat is on 4th and Main Street. It's going to be called Gus's 4th and Main Street Laundromat LLC. And no one's going to have that. And that's the only thing is whether or not someone else has that LLC. That's the only differentiation. And you go to your secretary of state and you can look up name avail- availability and start typing in names. Yep. And you'll see available or not. It's pretty simple. It's Chris really Toro easy. says from one Brooklyn kid to another, I'm looking forward to buying Danny's program. Well, Chris, get off the, the shitter and do the pot. <laughs> I don't know, whatever that is. It, it, you know, it's, it's insane to me. My course is pennies. It's literally pennies. And the reason is it's a business card. I want you to get into this business. I want you to understand what the rest of us know, what Juan knows, what Joe Dan Reed knows. I want you to be involved in this. And, and the folks that get hurt, that, that, that lose. I called Joe Dan the other day because we had a guy in Brooklyn, New York, who was building a laundromat. Speaking of Brooklyn, Christopher, they were in it all Over $850,000 already spent. When I mentioned environmental impact fees, they said, what? What? That wasn't even involved. That's per washer, by the way, Danny. That's per washer. They're going to end up with a million-dollar laundromat. And Joe Dan, take it home. How big was the store? How big was it? 1,500 square feet. Are you kidding me? And Joe Dan had some really good pointed questions. He wanted to know, what is the distributor telling you your turns per day were going to be? And it was. Five. I, I don't recall. Five turns yeah, per five day. Ter- and and Joe Dan asked, what did what did their PN, what did their future potential hokey win? What did it say you were gonna do in drop off business? That was your question. Three hundred pounds. Yeah. Three hundred thousand. So you're gonna you're not gonna let the customers use the store who come in on the on the street. He didn't think anything out. So you're you're gonna you're gonna push your walk business away for the wash dry and fold. And you're just not going to make any money, period. He still didn't seem to get it. I don't know. Uh, Chris, my phone gives me a notification when somebody buys the course. So your fruity ass better get on it, like, right now. The quickest way to get it, go to one any one of my YouTube videos and click the link in the description or go to freelaundromat.com. But you're not going to miss anything here. All this will be up later. And we're all going to give you an, an, an applause when you finally pull the trigger. This, this stuff is a tax write-off. And you know what? I've put people in car washes accidentally, in barber shops and nail salons accidentally. I've helped people to realize that the business they were building was a mistake accidentally. It's not just laundromat stuff. It is far, far more than that. Maybe Watching your video got me away from vending. That was awesome. <laughs> you just had to realize, dude, why am I doing this? Why am I spending six hours in my nine stores putting soda cans into the machine for $50. It doesn't make sense. It's like having a, no, no. Having a coin op on your, on your toilet. D- don't do it. You're, you're making 25 cents, and what are they going to do once they get in? They'll spend the quarter, and the homeless will go in there and do drugs. Yeah, there's certain aspects where you 
you chalkboard something and you say, I'm going to fix the problem I'm having, but so many people are so ignorant to what their problem is, they don't know how to solve it. Oh, I'm going to make the money with the coin pusher, like we said, the break-ins, the scratched glass. When my soda and snack guys, they tried to put a machine into one of my stores because they broke the glass and they tried to put uh, expanded metal in the front, I called them up, like you said, I said, get this out of here. Uh, you either lost the contract with all my stores or you're going to put a nice glass machine back in here. I don't care how often That's it gets right. broken into. I'm not going to have my store look like a prison. No, thank you. And they did, of course. Oh, no problem. You know, save that for the for downtown bus stations. That's not what we have here. I, uh, Joe Dan, I love you, man. And we'll see you in Vegas, January. I'm going to start putting out some uh, content referencing all the speakers, everybody that's going to be there. The thing's a couple thousand dollars for a ticket, but my God, it, you know, I, I don't. I can't wait. I'm not piddle. Wait. I'm not piddle farting around. I'm not here to say, oh, you know, today it's X amount, and then when we get a week closer, it's going to go up. All that kind of crap. And that's that's not my thing. The price is the price. Like buying just about anything that has worth. Uh, this is everybody pays the same, and I'm never going to say that there's not enough tickets because we'll get a bigger a bigger boardroom. That's all we'll do. Got quiet in here. Juan, you're not saying no, shit. I'll, I'll, I'm going to bring the Weller 12. Joe Dan, you gonna, are, are, are you going to stay on when I call the landlord or we're going to let you go? <laughs> Whatever you like, Danny. It, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Oh, Juan's texting me that it's hard to talk. He's in the car with five people. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, I look, I'm a steamroller. So we got this landlord on the hook and we're going to make this call. So I don't know. You might as well stay on Joe Dan. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm calling Mark and Juan, I don't care about the five people in the car, man. It was kind of driving me a little crazy there with, with everything that's going on. I don't know what this guy's doing. He's partying in New Jersey right now. Uh, Juan, we so far, thus far, we had one seven minute telephone call with Mark. And Mark has 50 plus multifamily buildings in a 20 block radius. He's a big time real estate guy. And he almost felt, Joe Dan, like he, he felt bad that he wanted to give us the business because he doesn't know how to run it. And he said several times on that call, I have it in my notes, several times, I don't know the laundromat business. I just don't know it. He, he ended up with the laundromat because the previous building owner ran it. And he doesn't want it. So we're kind of, what I think is going to happen, and this is all academic right now, it's a 2,300 square foot facility, and we don't know what he wants to collect in rent quite yet. Do we, Juan? We don't know what the rent is? No, we don't have the rent. He was doing research on the market. Yeah. He, he, needed to, he needed to research the market rate. I can imagine why, why are you in a car with five people? What do you, what do you, are you at the bar? What are you doing? You just finished training man. we went to the city together and now we're going back home. Okay. I thought you were jobless. You're still hanging out. You, you're trying to get with some girl. No, I'm just working out, working out with a group of teammates. Yeah. I know what that I, means. All right. Without further ado, we've teased this enough. I believe, uh, let's, let's see what Mark's doing. I did text him. And he did not text back, so he might be busy. Let's call him up. He's the only one that doesn't know that we're live on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. Now's your chance. Come on, Mark. Hey, um, I'm sorry. I just got home with my kids. Okay. Um, should we push? Should you push one more day till tomorrow? Absolutely. I don't want to be difficult. I don't. No, want... Mark. Yeah. God bless. Time with your family. I appreciate your picking up and letting me know. Uh, text me tomorrow, and we'll talk. Go play with the kids. All right. Cheers, brother. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Well, the YouTube universe heard that. I didn't click over with Joe, Dan, and Juan. Mark picked up the phone. He said, I just got home with my kids. Is it okay if we push till tomorrow? And hey, guess what? Another teaser for YouTube. We're going to talk to Mark, the New Jersey 
real estate mogul who also happens to have a laundromat that he doesn't want any longer. Guys, I'm doing one of these a day, okay? I've got students coast to coast and in 28 other countries, and I do not charge enough for what I do. Let's have a little sales meeting here, right? I just don't. And I don't expect you to say that or think that now, but get the silly course if you haven't seen it. It used to be a DVD, and now the plastic discs are a thing of the past. I just looked, some guy's trying to sell them on eBay. It's like, okay, great, that used to piss me off, but I have 101 hours of content there. Joe Dan, Juan, uh, appreciate both of you. Juan, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go and... Text me tomorrow and we'll get this knucklehead back on and scoop up his laundromat free of charge. Oh, you guys are both on hold. They, <laughs> uh, Mark was with, with his family and his kids and he said, hey, I just got home and, and let's push till tomorrow. So I said, good, good for you. I appreciate that. Sort of what we've all been talking about here, right? The fact that time with family is the most important thing. And I appreciate him actually answering the phone. So there's the teaser. Juan, I'm going to let you go. Sounds good, Danny. Thank you. Text me tomorrow. Nice talking to you. Good, good luck with the girl. I know he's trying to get some ass with that girl. Why, why do you go to a work thing when you don't even work there anymore? I have no idea. What do you say? He was working out, going to train? Training, working out. I think he's like a karate dojo guy. Okay. Well, see if he wants time. That he's in the right, trying to get in the right business. Absolutely. You put your dojo in the back, Matt. Be done. <laughs> Dude, I I can't tell you how enjoyable it is to talk to you. And here's the funny thing: we've never met, Joe Dan. We've never sh we've never shook hands. Um, you kind of found me during your journey on this thing, and I don't want to finish all that. I just have one question. Did you ever give me a single dime for anything? Absolutely nothing. I think you've given me more than I've given you. I think I sent you a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, a door shirt. Dude, the, again, you know, my, my, my silly course that starts all of this, oh, Juan's texting me, it's jujitsu, so they're jujitsu people. I knew that. See, okay. somewhere in... Somewhere down in my heart of hearts, I understood all that. But I just want to come across to folks to understand that, you know, forget about paid endorsements. That's utterly preposterous. You know, we used to watch television late night where folks are selling whatever the product is, and it's just so hokey. You know, this, set it and forget it. This is the greatest blender ever. It's like, Jesus, what are you so excited about? No, it's like I, watched, blender. I watched Dan D'Angelo uh, calls. That's what I, me and my wife did, just lay there watching. That's right. Laughing our asses off, watching these landlord calls. And I was getting some great tips, and I didn't even know. You know, it's, it's funny. Then uh, one day I just, I, I texted you on YouTube, and then you said, call me. And I said, well, I don't have your number. Then you DM me found me on Facebook. And then next thing you know, I was calling you. And our, our first conversation was what? Three hours on the Probably. phone. Yeah. Talking crap. And I, I feel like I've known you my whole life. It's a good time. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't know. I talk to you once or twice a month and yeah. And, uh, I'm always learning something from you, Danny. That's one thing that's true. Same. Um, I, I, did, it's, I, it's, it's, I can't wait to see you in Vegas and hopefully we're going to make a lot more buddies and you know, Oh we're, yeah, we're oh, yeah. and uh, I know that we. I've been cracking the whip with a lot of the folks. If you're invited and you're an invited guest and a speaker, everybody's got their own impetus to get more and more, more and more folks involved. Peter Mayberry is uh, ha is still on the fence, I guess, but I know that that guy will be there, and he's tons of fun. So Mayberry, oh Mayberry's going. It's Vegas. Yeah, I already told Mayberry. Mayberry said he's going to be there. Yeah, he's gonna be there. It, it, you, it, problem is, Mayberry Bar doesn't close till about five a.m. Yeah. So well, that's what twenty twenty four seven. Uh, Correct. So a couple more questions, real quick. Tim Vanks has any updates on Car Wash Chronicles getting a laundromat? Uh, I, you know, I don't think he's serious about getting laundromats, and I wouldn't say anything behind anyone's back. I wouldn't say to their face, and I think that. Uh, Chris kind of maybe might do it, but he knows that the car washes are his thing. 
Gus comes back with another thing and says, I heard you negotiate for smaller stores, 1,000 to 100 square feet, even though you recommend no smaller than 1,500 square feet. What's the profit on a small store? No, I don't do that. I will tell my client it's too small. The only stores that can even survive that are that tiny would be in the city, meaning the city, meaning New York City. And those stores are so small because some landlord somewhere back in the history had this tiny little spot that he couldn't figure out what to do with. So he plugged, he calls his plumber and his electrician, which is all you need to build a laundromat, and he plugs in some washers and dryers. For him, it can make money because it's cash, right? It's not a big deal. And he's not allocating rent to himself. And it's really an OPL, an on-premises laundry for the people that live in the high rise. It makes it nice for them. And so he's got that income, but you don't want to take over a store that small. You'll famously hear me tell the student, no. Now, you're not a contractor, Gus, so I don't expect you to know what 1,200 square foot or 1,500 square foot looks like. 25 washers or more. And I heard Joe Dan right on this call say 28 was your smallest store. And so, yeah, profit. But it's busy. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And a consumer will walk in, and if all your equipment is working... You have to think of the mindset of the consumer, which most people call lowlifes because they're in a laundromat. But they walk in and they see that every washer is being used. They'll wait an hour as long as there are no out-of-order signs. As soon as one of those machines is broken, they'll get pissed and they'll leave because they'll say, that's my machine. That's the one I'm waiting for. And off they go. If it's just circumstance, hey, can't get on the cab because there's not one available. I can't get into the subway because it's full. It's circumstance. You don't blame the city or the cab driver. You blame your circumstance. Should have been here five minutes earlier. That's the way the human mind works. So don't give them the opportunity to try to go somewhere else because your machines are out of order. Well, this was all a big uh, nothing burger, but I think in reality it ended up being a really fun call because of you, Joe Dan, so thanks. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we're going to call back our buddy who's hanging out with his kids. And Joe Dan, you can watch this because you missed the part where I called him. And all he said was, hey, man, I, I, I just got... It's, and it also is very telling, right, because this is a negotiation. He wants us in that store, or he wouldn't have answered. He would have just gone, oh, F this guy, I'll let it go to voicemail. No, he picked up and said, I'm kind of busy... Can I hang out with my kid? Oh, yeah, dude. You know, and that's that's a good symbiosis that starts from the beginning with a landlord. Of course, I said, I'm not going to say to that guy, well, hey, man, just tell me what the what what you want to collect, because I got, you know, 100 people watching on YouTube right now. <laughs> no. Hey, have a good time with your kids. Thanks for picking up. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you, Joe Dan. All right. Dan. Have a good day. Appreciate you, bro. All right. Take care. Well, I don't know if this is our friend that just paid, but it's through uh, 12th Street, and uh, maybe that is him, but somebody did grab the course. Two eighty nine ninety nine, Kaboom. If you're on the fence, if you're here because you think that you need to get into a laundromat or 10, and you want to start collecting, do the math. I was a little dumbfounded when... Joe Dan threw that number out, but he didn't know what I was going to ask him. And there's no bullshit in that guy. That's after the bills are paid and rented space with equipment notes. This is serious dough. What are you doing? Stay tuned. If you haven't subbed, do so. See you tomorrow. Keep your ear to the ground because I never know when I'm going to go live. That's part of my thing, and neither do you. When you sub to the channel, you're being selfish because you'll get notifications. Turn on your notifications. Thumbs up if you've already subscribed. Thanks, kids. See you tomorrow.